Hi everybody, Lee Veras here, bringing you another Phototech Tuesday. Today I'm going to examine my creative process on a single image from our photo adventures in Tuscany. We take over a fantastic villa in the Val d'Orchia region south of Siena for a super chill tour of the amazing wine producing landscape of Tuscany. This last May I found some of the best photo ops on the villa grounds, especially during sunsets and sunrises. Let's take a look. Okay, so here are a few shots from Tuscany. And uh, over here we start showing some of the shots of the villa. Uh, this is the one in particular that I'm interested in examining. And um, let's just, I'll go into full screen here just to talk about this. So I, the thing that drew me to the scene, this is right as the sun is starting to go down below the horizon. And the foreground area is, is coming into shade, but the sun is hitting this tree directly. And I notice that there's this sort of mirror of shape of the cloud that's mirroring the shape of the tree. And we also have these sort of leading lines come in, but I, I, was, I was feeling like maybe I was a little too close here. So backed up, and now my leading lines work a lot better. It puts this, this area of interest more into the one-third uh, line of the frame, and you can kind of see the leading lines are bringing you right into this, where the tree is receiving the full sunlight. And um, this, this scene actually, this whole foreground area was much darker and the sky was lighter, so it suggested that uh, I have to do an HDR so let's take a look at at the uh, at the full thing. Let me get out of this. So I'll show you now the brackets. Okay, so so here here is my merged HDR, and these are the brackets. So I had a kind of a, a, a regular exposure, a dark exposure, and a light exposure, and we blend those all together and. Uh, this is kind of what it looked like before the post-processing. So I've created an HDR, and, and the, the way you, let me just go over that again, just so you, you know. So we have an overexposed shot, we have a correctly exposed shot, and we have an underexposed shot. And what you do is you go into Photo Merge, Photo Merge, HDR, and we get this dialog, which should come up momentarily here. Here we go. Okay, so here's the merge thing. You can kind of see it's this is sort of replicates the middle exposure uh, of the bracket. And uh, our goal is going to be to open up the shadows and, and put some more shape and structure into the sky. Um, these settings here, the deghost amount, you only need to use a deghost setting if something is moving. And sometimes I've found that you can get some ghosting in the clouds. Um, so leaving it on low is, is almost, you know, in general, it's a good idea just to eliminate any possibility of seeing double images uh, in your HDR merge. So I'll just click on Merge, and um, I've already done this, so I'm not going to wait for the, the merge to happen. I have it right over here, um, and now let's take it into the Develop module, and I'll show you my strategy here. So, so, um, so here we are now. This is an unusual strategy, and I, I sort of discovered this while I was working on infrared images. Um, so we're going to reduce the highlights. And here's the big surprise. I'm going to increase the shadows, which sort of flattens the contrast overall. And it makes everything look like it's sort of lit. Um, but here's the trick. Instead of adding contrast back using the contrast sliders or you know playing around with some of these other settings or even a curve, I'm going to use the dehaze slider. And the beauty of the dehaze is that it adds just the right kind of contrast that the clouds get looking really great and the foreground gets some shape and it brings out the colors. It's a little too saturated in the greens. Uh, so that's what we're going to use the HSL area for. And I can always use the target adjustment tool here. Uh, click on a color that I want to desaturate, which would be this green color. And I move it down to desaturate. And you can kind of see, it's going to take some of that candy apple 
<laughs> extra vivid saturation away. I think also the blue skies maybe just a touch too saturated. So I'm just going to drag down on it just a little bit, and and there you go. I I think that very little work needs to be done with this. Sometimes with a landscape picture, I always add just a little bit of post crop vignetting. It just kind of adds a little bit of kind of edge containment, right? So it keeps your eye going into the center where all the activity is around this tree in the cloud here. So uh, let me just turn that little um, eye on and off. And you can kind of see no vignetting, yes vignetting. It's very subtle. You don't want to overdo it, but it does kind of bring your eye into the center of the frame, and uh, that helps finish this off. Um, so what I thought I'd do now is just, is just kind of look at a few scenes from the villa uh, to end this Photo Tech Tuesday. So this is uh, what has been known as Grandmother's House, the only house we can see from the villa. Here's our, our front uh, driveway leading from the main road. <laughs> I always have to get a picture of Bobby outstanding in her field. With these fantastic trees all the way around. Uh, and there's the pool, of course. Our own vegetable garden, which we can tap into every evening if we want fresh salad. Some little details. The, the villa itself is really pretty. There's Grandma's house again. The only one we can see around the neighborhood. There's with the beautiful sky. We have lovely sunsets and the skies all around are amazing. There's a there's a vineyard attached to the villa where they grow their own wine. And uh, we get to sample that wine while we're here. And gorgeous sunsets from the villa. Looking back towards grandma's house again. And here's that, uh, that shot of the tree. And just uh, because I thought it would be cool, here's it in infrared. That's not quite the same thing, but the clouds do look different in infrared. And uh, some more infrared scenes because I just love shooting in infrared. This is all from our villa. Again, really beautiful skies, which are especially dramatic in infrared. We do get to use that pool quite, quite often. It's really great at the end of the day. Quick little dip. And here's overview of the villa. This is what it looks like from above, Bobby's drone, our outdoor dining area, and here again from the other side. Really lovely in the late afternoon, the sun streams in here, it's just gorgeous. Here's the inside dining, and I'll throw a few views of rooms and some of the amenities of the villa, which is really pretty amazing. Everything's first rate at the villa. Fantastic uh, showers, great kitchen. We, uh, we will prepare our own foods. We have a chef come in and uh, cook a meal for us for our welcome and uh, farewell dinner. It's a game room. On the other side of the game room is uh, a, a jacuzzi and a sauna. There is a view of that. Upstairs kitchen. <laughs> and again, the bathrooms are just really great. All right, outdoor seating for watching the sunsets, really nice. And there's the villa again. You can see the surrounding area is just gorgeous. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Phototech Tuesday.
You might be interested in more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and uh, my uh, social media. So be sure and like the video, and uh, also please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. You might consider following me on Instagram, and uh, I have a number of books in print uh, still. Uh, at, you can get these on Amazon, Master and Exposure in the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. We're getting a little long in the tooth, but in the second edition, there's still some really useful information here. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Phototech Tuesday. Bye-bye, everybody.